What is going on, Colts Nation? The Colts finally win. Uh, of course, they go and beat one of the best teams after getting absolutely smoked a week ago after we all, or at least me, uh, goes and completely just trashes them. They come out and they respond well. Um, Colts win 20-17 to in their home opener against the Kansas City Chiefs. Uh, guys, I know you guys were just off of streaming this game. You watched every part of it. Give me your instant reactions to the Colts' first win of the year. Oh, man, I'll tell you right now. It got a little dicey there at the tail end of the second quarter, that offensive line, because to me that was the biggest thing. The offensive line and the way they turned that script. Like I said, the tail end of that second quarter was like, this is a disaster. Everybody's lost on the right side of the line and just lost it. But second half adjustments, they came back in. Cleaned up a little bit. You know, it wasn't perfect. I'm not trying to say that. But, guys, we got our first W, and we're starting off 1-1-1. One, one, and one. Best start in the Frank Reich era. Absolutely. That's wild. <laughs> um, yeah. So, Well, hold on. So here, here's the thing. Before the stream, like right as we was talking before the stream, I said the key to this game was keep it close. Keep it within one score at halftime because the Colts are a second half team. They play much better in the second half. They did that and was able to make that comeback and win the game in the fourth quarter. And I'll tell you what, I thought, uh, man, Ryan on that final drive was spectacular. And you could see it in his eyes. He walked out there after that first completion, that look on his face. He knew he was going to score a touchdown on that drive and win the game. He knew it. You could see it in his face. It was absolutely phenomenal. Mm. Yeah. So, guys, what in the world? Like, it's so hard with this team to figure out what is this team right now? Because a week ago, we were – so we were like, and myself included, Frank Reich's like, job was on the line. Like, now I think, I don't know if you guys were to that extreme. I, you know, we maybe did a little bit too much, but like, I was honestly just done with him. Like, I'm just like, if you just look like you're pathetic. You didn't look like you wanted to play. And then they come out and, you know, they, it's weird. I don't understand this team because they play up to their competition. And they play down to their competition. It's just very, very strange. What in the world do we think about this Colts team three weeks into the season? where they've had three different results, guys. We haven't seen the actual Indianapolis Colts yet, even after today. That's what I have to say out of that. Uh, this team has still got mental mistakes going on out there. All right Now, obviously, Pinter, uh, he was being bullied out there at, at guard. Um, but for the first three weeks or first two weeks, there was a lot of mental mistakes that really cost them games, right? Uh, in the first week, it had a lot of missed snaps and uh, missed calls. In the second week, the offensive line uh, wasn't communicating properly. Um, and they hadn't practiced very much uh, against other teams. There's a whole bunch of new people uh, coming together on the team, and they're trying to to, to kind of get cohesion going. And it's been that way for like the last eight years with the Colts, not even in the Frank – this has happened before the Frank Reich era, right, where they start off this really slow, and they, they start to pick it up between week three and week six. And the way I see it is this team is – Better than what we saw week one and week two, okay? But uh, I think they can get much, much better uh, the more they play. I, I think this is a team that could legitimately become uh, a team that can absolutely be a contender down the stretch. They just have to learn from their mistakes and continue to get better at their communication with one another. What's going on, everybody? Today, I want to talk to you about our sponsor, Bet stamp. Now I know what you're thinking. Derek, another betting app? What is so different about this one now? Well, I got to tell you guys, I'm not into online gambling a whole lot and bets online and everything, but I got to tell you, bet stamp is one of the coolest things I have ever seen in regards to betting online. The great thing about bet stamp is it allows you to see all the different odds from all different sports books and see which one provides you the best odds possible for any game or scenario you want to bet on for your pick versus some of the worst. BetStamp allows you to also buy and sell picks that you have without worrying about losing your money or having any issues with it. Believe me, it's all free. I mean, look at this, guys. You have an option for every game across all different kinds of leagues. 
in a ton of different ways. You have baseball, you have college football, UFC, NBA, and NFL. Great for the NFL season now being here. And if I wanted to bet on this Tennessee Titans versus Buffalo Bills game, it shows me in real time what are the best odds, which sports book I'm going to get the best offer from versus some of the worst ones. Because why would you want to spend what get earn less money from points bet when you could be winning more from Pro Line Plus? Again, a great thing that BetStamp offers you, allowing you to make more money for the same pick just with a different sports book. How easy is that? And the great thing is, is there's not just games. There's player props. There's game props. There's lines. There's live tracking. There's a ton of great ways to make bets and picks on BetStamp, guys. Totally a cool thing to use. I highly encourage you to check it out if you're into any kind of online betting. Even if you're not, give it a check. See what you like about it because I think I actually enjoy using it. But the best way to get an edge on online sports betting is having multiple accounts at different sports books. Be sure to hit the bet link page, betstamp.app slash onboarding. Be sure to check out the betstamp app or online and be sure to use the referral code juice plug in your state and you'll get access to all their affiliates and their prices once you open up seeing all states lines be sure to check this out guys you won't want to miss it for the best odds on your next sports bet yeah and for me i mean huge, huge getting Michael Pittman Jr. and Alec Pierce back today. I mean, in the fourth quarter, you were talking about the look on Matt Ryan's eye. Thing was, is there was a pass where Michael Pittman Jr. catches this thing in the middle of the field, and it was like a 50-50. They, the receiver and the defender have both hands on the ball, and you just see Pittman Jr. wanted it more. He just rips it out of the guy's hand and then extends you know, the game by 15, 20 more yards. But let's get this right side of the offensive line. I know we – spoke briefly with Derek before he uh, had ended the stream. And <laughs> and he was talking about Ryan Kelly, Ryan Kelly. And, and and all I asked Derek to do is look at it, because honestly, I felt like Ryan Kelly was more trying to aid and assist the whole right guard situation. Because like Lauren said, Penner, I mean, he just, he's not strong enough. You know what I mean? If he doesn't get below the defender, he it's, it's game over for him. You know what I mean? It's just game over. And Matt Pryor, I thought, played much better this week. You know, and, and we had talked about earlier on the week on our channel, how would Matt Pryor feel without having to look over his shoulder and worry about Bernard Ryman? I don't know if that has anything to do with it, but I will say that he came out and he, as a whole, played much better because last week my I wasn't get rid of everybody, but I was of the ill before we found out about Ryman. I was like, put Ryman at left tackle, move Pryor over to get that right guard solidified, and then just we're used to playing with, with – undesirable play for the last couple of years at the left tackle spot. But when we started letting it affect our right, right side of our line, Braden Smith, I mean, there's just a lot of things that, like Lawrence said, we haven't seen the best of what this team has. I mean, Shaquille Leonard hasn't even played a snap yet. This defense had a few, had a few plays where it really got, really got exposed by, you know, the tight ends and stuff. And we knew that. I mean, their tight ends are, Phenomenal. Kelsey's a stud, you know. But the thing was, was some of the adjustments we saw with uh, Bobby O'Karake keeping, you know, early in the first. <laughs> but, uh, but like I said, the way this team is getting together, week four, week five, I cannot wait to see the differences that they make. And 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 I still feel like there needs to be an adjustment at that right guard spot for sure. But if we can figure that right guard spot out, I think we will be okay on the left tackle because we showed Mo Ali Cox and Matt Pryor came in playing with a much, much more complete effort. Last week it was it was lackluster for my for my preference. Uh, look, I'm gonna tell you what. I'm gonna shout out a position group. The tight end group played a heck of a game today. Kylan Granson was absolutely clutch today when it came to getting third down catches, making tough catches, making good blocks. Mo Alley Cox was out there playing well. And how about our rookie Jelani Woods? Two catches, two touchdowns. I mean, come on. Uh, he, he Shout out to the tight ends. I think they absolutely uh, stood out. We, 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 we talked all offseason, you know, 
the two position groups that the Colts, uh, a, lo- a lot of people wanted to talk about was, you know, the wide receivers didn't have any veterans and there was no s- good enough skill position at the tight ends that our tight end position wasn't good enough, but our tight ends and, uh, you know, they, they came out and they played absolutely stellar today. Uh, and, and if it wasn't for them, there was no way we had a chance at winning this game. Yeah, guys, I mean, I apologize for the, the bad thing. I I'm usually not on my phone, but, um, and I have like 30 people trying to call me. It seems like right when we try to record, it never fails. Um, but, yeah, no, all that to say, you know, this is something that we had said briefly, I had mentioned on the podcast, just like, where is Jelani Woods at? You know, you have a six foot seven tight end. Why aren't you using him? And, you know, it's great to see, you know, him and Alec Pierce starting to put in some work, you know, starting to really contribute to this offense, right? We didn't know how much they'd contribute right away. We didn't see much the first couple of weeks. Um, so I love to see that, you know, players like Jelani Woods, players like Alec Pierce, they're rising to the occasion and they're helping Matt Ryan in this offense you know, finally, you know, be able to get, uh, you know, lifting this offense to where it needs to be. So great to see him. It's like kind of like, a, you know, it's kind of like a, just a coming out party for both of them. So I, I love to see it, man. Absolutely love to see it. Oh, and shout out to my new co-host for Believe in Colts with the game ceiling interception, Rodney McLeod. Wow. That was absolute, And that wasn't just him. That was a deep hit. The defense as a whole did absolutely phenomenal today. I mean, we held the Kansas City Chiefs under 300 total yards, right? Who was the last team to do that? I don't know. I don't know. I couldn't I couldn't tell you when the last time a defense held Kansas City to under 300 yards. Was it the Indianapolis Colts back in 2019? Because that, that's, that's what it seems like. This team seemed like they were able to score uh, 13, you know, within 13 seconds at any time in any game, right? Uh, so for the Colts to go out there and, and the defense, like you said, loyalists without Shaquille Leonard, uh, without Blackman for, uh, the majority of the game, there was a period of time where we was afraid Gilmore wasn't even going to come back because he was out of the game. And yet still guys come in, stepped up, Dio Dangbo stepped up, um, uh, Ode Nigbo stepped up. I saw Taekwon Lewis out there having a game. Uh, and hey, I'll tell you what, it hurts me to say this because I feel dirty saying this, but Ben Banigou actually went out there and had a couple plays today and made some plays, and that's good on him. The entire defense stepped up and had a heck of a game. Yeah, and, and I'll, I'll, one more guy, because that's that was today. You know, the young players showing up. I mean, Thomas came in and gave Thomas, us yeah. gave us some really valuable reps at that safety position because, you know, we were still running our same defense. You know, even though we dropped Blackman, you know, Cross and Thomas and McLeod really went out there. And, and I was a little worried whenever, after, you know, the tail end of that first half when Blackman went out, I was like, oh, man, what's this defense going to come back like? What's that communication going to be like? Guys, even with our backup safeties, we held this dynamic Kansas City Chiefs team. To, what what they scored in the second half? I, I don't even, you know, wasn't it like you know, a field goal or something? I mean, I don't even remember. Yes. You know, I'm yes. so amped up. I mean, it, there, there was nothing second half with our defense. You know, I mean, our defense was, wasn't always put in the best of situations, but they absolutely, and then special teams. Holy heavens. Special teams set the tone early and often, and it was really – the rest was history after that. Yeah, awesome. And shout-out to Chase McLaughlin. Two of two on field goal to get a 51-yarder. Great to see, man. Chase McLaughlin picking up where he left off. Bro. And none of them kicked off out of bounds either. Hey. <laughs> we'll take that. You know, I, I'll take competence at kicker any day. <laughs> City, it's like the flip the script almost, you know, like Kansas City, known for, you know, the one of the best kickers with Butker being out, you know, they miss a potential like, you know, huge field goal. Um, so, yeah, man, those little things, they matter. Obviously, the Colts not perfect by any stretch, but it's good to see them starting to get confidence because I think there's a lot of questions like, OK, is, you know, after last week, you know, where is this locker room at? You know, have they lost the locker room? You know, um, so great to see them going out and doing that, man. But. A lot to clean up, like you said, and uh, we will uh, we'll take the win, but uh, we'll see, man, because next week's an important game because Tennessee also won today. So, you know, it's a battle for that top of the division right now. We'll see. We'll see how it goes. Absolutely.
Awesome. Well, thanks guys for tuning in. I appreciate you both for hopping in today and covering for both Derek and myself. Um, always great uh, to you know give new voices to you guys, and obviously, guys, go check out Lawrence and uh, Loyalist Channel over there. And you guys do great work, and we really appreciate uh, just your time today. Hey, thanks for having us, Bob. Yep, right. always here to help a friend out, man. Yeah, appreciate that, and thank you everybody who tuned in. Like you said, you had five one point five to six hundred people in there. That's amazing. The so all you time. guys should go the whole time. So the all you guys time. should go check out uh, their channel. Um, get them to where are you guys at right now? I haven't checked in a minute. Pushing twenty eight hundred. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Get them to three K. I don't think that should be a problem. So be sure to go help them out guys. And, uh, yeah, uh, great win. Great win. I'm happy to eat my words today. I thought the Colts had no shot. Happy to eat my words. It's, it's better to predict a loss and win than predict a win and lose. Right. That's true. <laughs> Very true. That's how I did last week, and I wasn't as disappointed as maybe I would have been if I was fully confident in this team. So, but hey, man, we'll see. We'll see how the Colts respond next week. It's a big game, uh, potentially division changing game. Um, we'll see. But uh, yeah, that'll be it for this one, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. And as always, guys, go Colts. Yeah.